Hey guys, this is Locke. In this video, I'm going to be doing an in-depth review on Stargazer. Before we get into the review, let's just take a look at some of her assets. Like this is her her, her picture uh, and this is her profile picture. I think she has, she has a very cool look. Um, a lot of people have said that they're really interested in the way she looks and the way she sounds. A lot of people have set her up as the main profile picture so that you know you can click on her and hear her sultry kind of voice. Uh, she has very interesting mechanics as well. But in this video, I'm going to be talking more about, you know, how does she function as a unit, the mechanics behind it, and should you pull for her? Is she worth it for you? Who should be pulling for her? So um, the first thing we should be doing in our covering a unit is to uh, look, at, look to her skills. There are six skills that you need to pay attention to, uh, and I'm going to go in order. So the first one is her normal attack skill. So this normal attack does 71% of damage of uh, each attack and this is actually a lower modifier than most other uh, units like for example if you're looking at Hakate which is right here is it Hakate or Hakate I, I don't know maybe somebody can uh, tell me in the comments how we should be saying your name but if you look at her normal attack right it's 105 percent so um, and she is an A rank whereas Stargazer is an S rank so why is it lower because she actually has two uh, victory stars, kind of like her pets or summons, that are also doing damage. So that's the reason why her initial skill has a much lower modifier than others. Um, so her second skill, a victory star, she summons a victory star on a target grid. Um, after you summon that victory star, you can't actually move it, but uh, you can summon two. You, you know, you can summon two different uh, victory stars on uh, on on the map at one time. Uh, and these victory stars will actually do AOE type damage. Um, their initial attack is 100% of Stargazer's uh, attack. So if her attack is say 400, they will also have 400 attack. Uh, and they will deal 130% of attack damage. So now there you go. So she deals only like 71% of damage, but they deal a lot more. They deal almost twice as much damage as, as she does. And it's in an AOE kind of circle. So most of her damage and utility and everything is actually coming from this victory star. So placement of victory star is going to be really important. If you are um, playing her, you need to look at where mobs will come. You can see, you know, if you click on an arrow, or if you click on where the mobs are spawning, you can see the arrow, the path they will take. And you will have to try to uh, put these victory stars in positions where it's going to be able to damage a lot of units at once. Um, uh, yeah, so they, they deal... Uh, uh, AOE damage in a three by three square around them. Uh, so that's her second skill. Her third skill, it's you know her passive. When this victory star deals damage to the same an enemy multiple times in a short period of time, the damage from all victory stars increases by four percent. So if you have two victory stars right next to each other, and say you also have a tank as well, uh, or you're using the victory st stars to tank, uh, enemies are going to be stuck there for a while, especially if you're using say one or two tanks and they each. Uh, are able to hold two enemies you can you know you can keep an enemy locked in a place and you can have two victory stars next to each other every time these victory stars are um, attacking these enemies uh, in quick succession the damage they take from victory stars is going to increase as well uh, up to five times so it starts at a uh, it starts at four percent increase uh, up to five which can be stacked five times and it goes all the way up to 7.2 uh, percent which again can be stacked five times so that's almost 35 percent more damage think about boss fights right and you're uh, doing boss fights, the damage from this, I mean, the boss is going to be there for a while. Um, you're going to be continuously attacking them. The damage from these victory stars are going to go up by 35% or actually a little bit more because I didn't account for the 0.2. But basically, yeah, these victory stars is where she gets most of her damage from. Um, her last passive, when this victory star disappears, there's two ways to make it disappear. Uh, I will get into them in a second. But when these victory star disappears, it deals 200% of Stargazer's uh, magic damage to everyone in the 3x3 three three square. Um, so initially, these victory stars do 130% of damage uh, in an AoE as they're attacking enemies, and then when these stars disappear, they do 200% of damage. So how do you make these stars disappear? Well, one way is that they can be destroyed, right? Like enemies can come and attack them and destroy them, and they're gone. Another way to make them disappear is to summon a third star. So if you have two stars already and you're summoning a third one, it will make this second one disappear, right? Um, so that's that's another way of doing it. And then um, if you look at our other skills, right? There are two more skills that you pay attention to. So one is this passive right here, 
which is mania intensified. So this is what happens when you go to phase two. So when you are level 40 and you unlock phase two, she gets this skill, Rising Star. So you can cast your ultimate on an existing victory star because you can have two at a time. So if you cast it on an existing victory star, it'll deal twice the damage from Realm of Truth. Realm of Truth is a skill that does 400%, uh, sorry, 200% of damage. So this will now instead do 400% of damage uh, to enemies around this star as it basically combusts. Um, yeah, and, and it says that new victory star will not be summoned uh, because you're basically uh, using the skill on an existing one, uh, you're making combust, and it will deal damage twice instead. Uh, and now her last skill that you need to pay attention to is her crime band. So you can click on the crime band, and this is unlocked when she's phase 3, so you get it up to level 70 and unlock the phase 3, and you'll get this skill. So there's a new ultimate called Dreamland. Now you have Stargazer wherever on the map, and you have two more victory stars on the map. When you click on the skill, uh, around her and the victory stars, she starts doing damage, which is 60% of attack damage to all enemies around herself and the victory stars, and this lasts for six seconds, sorry, eight seconds. Um, uh, she can't do anything else, like you can't move them or you can't ask, you can't make her pop up a new star because if you do, then the dreamland effect will be interrupted, but it'll last for eight seconds and it's, it's basically a, a, like a good AOE, like she, and for a huge region, you can make all three of them stand in such a way that the damages overlap, so you can make sure that the boss is damaged by all three, and this is a good source of damage. Um, it can only be used once in, a ma once in a match, so you have to be mindful when you use it. You have to make sure that you have two stars in the map to maximize the effect of this. Um, and yeah, I mean, she's an interesting character for sure. I think uh, she will be very appealing to people that like to play around with different mechanics. Um, if you like to just have, you know, one tank, and then you have uh, one damage dealer behind it, like, it's just a very simplified thing that I'm talking about. One tank and one damage dealer behind it. It's a very simplified method, right? Like, you have the tank um, tanking for you and the guy behind you, the damage dealer, just dealing damage. Whereas with Stargazer, you need to have, you need to think a lot more. You need to be a lot more aware of map awareness. You need to figure out where are the optimal positions to put these victory stars so that they will deal the most amount of damage. You need to figure out when you want to detonate one of these stars and use Rising Star on it. Um, so there are all different things that you need to uh, pay attention to. It's like it's not as straightforward as some of the other units, in my opinion. So that might appeal to some people. Because some people like to uh, have a challenge with these kind of games because this is a strategy type of game and you like to maximize the strategy around it. Uh, and so it could be appealing for her. In my opinion, I don't think it'll be appealing to most people because uh, I think that for what she can do, there are other better S-class units that can do it. Um, so she does deal a lot of damage, but she does not have any core breaking mechanics. She doesn't have any, um, uh, what's it called? Um, CC. She doesn't provide like any slows or stuns or anything. So she does a lot of damage. She does a lot of AOE damage, but that's kind of it. That's limited to it. And um, I would, you know, instead of using her, I would use Luvia Ray, my personal opinion, because she also does AOE damage. Uh, she does, you know, considerably less AOE damage than her, right? Because there's 67% of, of attack at, for two enemies. Um, but uh, she costs a lot less resources to build. Uh, you can also put her into the second mode, which deals, you know, throwing lightning spears, which deals a higher modifier of damage. I think she, like, I'm using her, right? I She is basically my main damage dealer. If you look at my team, she's the only one that I have at level 60. Um, and I wouldn't replace uh, Stargazer for her because it costs a lot of resources. As a free-to-play player, it's going to be really hard for me to get all the resources to build up another unit to 60. And if I am going to build that unit, I want her to be like you know a lot better than Luvia. I don't want her to be just a little bit better. I think Stargazer is a little bit better for sure. She is going to have a higher overall damage output, but I don't think that um, it justifies me to to make the uh, to make the, what's it called, to make the, the switch. Uh, if I get Irene, I, have, I can't say some of the unit's names. I'm going to, um, here, this guy. I think you say it as Irene. But if I get her, I would definitely replace Irene with uh, Luvia Ray. Because not only does she do a lot of damage, she also is able to core break, and she also provides a CC. So it's like a huge upgrade, right? She does three things. 
uh, and she does AoE damage as well. She does three things uh, that are so much better than Louis Array. So if I did get her, I would very definitely upgrade Louis Array with Irene. But Stargazer, no, I don't think so. I don't, um, uh, especially again as a free to play player with limited resources, I don't have the flexibility to uh, bring up another unit that's just a little bit better than Louis Array. Uh, so I am not going to be doing that. And I feel like a lot of people are probably in that position, especially free to play players. I mean, you guys have been playing, the game has been released for two weeks. You guys have already kind of raised up some units. Um, so sure, Stargazer is better than Livia Ray for sure. Like she is going to do more damage. She's also going to do more damage than Hekat, Hekat or Hekate, however you say it. But, uh, is it worth it? Like, do you want a little bit more incremental damage for, uh, you know, for all the resources that you dump into it again. Um, Irene's banner is supposed to be coming out in two weeks. So my personal opinion would be to hold out and wait for that. Uh, that's, you know, that's that's what I'm going to do. I mean, I already got her because I thought she was really cool and I really wanted to get this unit uh, to have her on my team. Um, maybe I can build her up as a side project much, much later on. But um, for, you know, free-to-play players that are in this position as me, um, don't have a lot of resources uh i would recommend skipping her because uh she's probably not going to give you as much of a boost as somebody else and if you already invest all your resources into stargazer right now right uh then when irene comes out and you want to invest it again like you're using so much resources like stamina is the one main limiting thing in this game right and if you're using so much stamina to bring up stargazer like say you already brought up somebody you brought up Louis Ray. And then you're using a lot of stamina to bring up Stargazer. And then when Irene comes out, you're like, wow, she's really good. Uh, she has CC, she has AoE, she has uh, Core Break. I really want to get her. And you do. And then, you know, you, you're basically using stamina three times, right? You need somebody. Like, I, I can't not play and wait for Irene to come out. Like, I need to raise someone. And I did. So in the interim, I don't want to raise another person. Because, again, as a free-to-play player, there's just not enough resources for me. Uh, if you are, if you have a ton of resources, if you ha are, you know, a paying player, I think the main benefit of playing players in this game is the ability and the flexibility to basically experiment with other units. Because right now I am doing quite well. Uh, I am in chapter six. This is my fifth day playing. I have beaten chapter six. I have beaten the, uh, you know, the the first one that's released, the first Raging Sands event. I've done the boss. And I was able to do all of that with six main units. Uh, I've got other units that I want to replace, like Bai. I really want to use her, but I don't have the resources right now. So these are the six units I've been using. And by using these six units, I've been able to beat all this, most of this content that I, I just explained. But as a pay paying player, you would have access to a lot more uh, resources. You would have access to a lot more, um, what's it called? Uh, this stuff the two things that you need to level up units, um, mania crystals and, and gold. So because you have a lot more of that resources, you can actually experiment with other units. You can experiment with uh, side projects like Stargazer. You can see how she is. Uh, you can really enjoy the mechanics and decide to use her over Irene anyway, or you can decide to use both. Um, in levels like the broken frontline, you actually need a whole team of magic units. You need a whole team of physical units. And when Guild Wars come out or Guild Battle comes out, uh, you will need to have three different teams. So it's not like you're going to, you know, raise this one unit up and then never use it again. There are going to be opportunities for you to use it. There's probably going to be different events coming out and different things coming out where you want to use different kind of units. So for paying players that have access to a lot more resources than I do, I think that's probably who um, Stargazer will appeal to the most. Somebody that can actually use... Uh, that can afford testing out other units and raise more than one or two units in a specific role. You can afford to raise Luvia Ray, Stargazer, and uh, Irene whenever you get her. Or if you're, you know, a very huge playing player, maybe, playing player, maybe you already have Irene. Um, so Stargazer herself is not bad. Like she is a pretty good unit. She's just not the best, in my opinion, for Magic class. And so because she's not the best. That's why I, I would not recommend her for most players. 
Uh, I think she has very interesting mechanics, though. Like, this Victory Star thing is really cool. Um, being able to detonate it, it's a very cool, like, strategic mechanic to have in the game. I, I very much um, applaud that this is in the game, that uh, devs have decided to put this kind of mechanic into it. I think it's really cool. Um, but uh, for me, it's going to be a, you know, well, I have her, so it's not going to be a skip. I mean, I'm eventually going to raise her, but, like, much, much later. But I'm not, I'm not, I don't have any immediate plans to raise her. I'm going to be waiting for Irene to uh, pour my resources into her instead. Um, but yeah, uh, one last thing that I want to mention. I've mentioned this in different games I card before. The best enjoyment that you will get out of a game is by using units that you will like. Um, if you are just chasing the meta and, you know, or the best units, whatever the best units are, if you're just chasing the best units and you hate those units, you're probably going to get either bored or frustrated of the game. The best way to enjoy the game is to really use the units that you really like. So if you really like Stargazer, invest in her, like pull for her, invest in her, use her, because um, you're going to get a lot more enjoyment out of the game by using uh, units that you like than from using the best, the best in class units or whatever. You know, so if you really like her, use her, you know, pull for her and use her. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I tried to make the review of comparing, you know, units in a similar capacity. And, and that's where I'm coming from. I'm trying to talk about the best. But if you really enjoy a unit, you really should use it because you can probably beat the game with, you know, anyone. You could probably use the worst units and level them up and it'll probably be more challenging for you. But you could beat the game with it. I've heard of other players that are only using the starter units. So whoever the game gives you for free is what they're using. They are not using, they're not even pulling at all. So they're not using any any pulls. They don't have any um, S units except for Nox that you get on day seven. Uh, but everyone else that they're using is a starter unit that the game already gave you. Uh, and they're doing fine. They're able to beat it. Sure, it might take a little bit longer to get there, um, but they're able to do it. So there's no reason why you will use Stargazer and just find content to be so difficult that you can't proceed. That will not happen. Uh, anyone is usable. You can use, uh, okay, maybe not anyone. I, I haven't looked at every single one of these units in like such detail to say anyone can be usable, but I'm pretty sure like 95% of these units are usable uh, and you should use them if they appeal to you. Anyway, this was my first review of a unit um, from this game, Path to Nowhere. Uh, leave a comment below. Let me know how you like this review. If there's stuff that I should cover about the unit, um, uh, let me know. Uh, maybe things like crime band recommendations. The reason I don't want to go into that right now is because I only have a limited knowledge with crime bands. Um, let me show you what I have. Uh, where do I go? It's here. So, you know, I only have certain crime bands. Off the top of my head, I would probably use uh, this one, which uh, increases magic damage, or I would use... Um, yeah, actually, this is probably the one that I would use to start off with because it increases magic damage by 15%. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think that's that's great. Uh, there are probably better crime bands out there later on, but I haven't done enough analysis on them to really give the best in class recommendation. I haven't even used, you know, the the legendary tier of crime bands. I think it'll take a while to get them, but this is this is the one that I would use if I was using her. I would put this on Irene as well because it would just increase her damage. I'm trying to keep these units out of the fray. I don't want them to take damage. So the negative, the damage increase, while it is, yeah, plus 25 damage increase, it hopefully shouldn't impact them too much because hopefully they're not taking too much damage. Um, but yeah, that's that's my review. Uh, leave me a comment. I hope you guys like this video and I hope to see you guys next time. Take care now.